America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. Welcome to America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and this is the big day, the beginning of the debate between um, presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. What are we expecting? And as we all know that if we live in expectation, we're certainly about to bump into sorrow. So um, I don't know if that's going to be our path for this evening. But, you know, when I started the initiative Meditate the Vote in May, it was to actually build this momentum of awareness that despite whoever enters into office, um, we're going to be okay with ourselves. We're going to take charge of our own internal or interior leadership. As you know, that's a huge call of the time. And the more that we are able to take charge of our internal leadership, then we don't subjugate ourselves to being at the whim or at the helm of another person's um, dictate on our lives, don't you think? Because as we observe history and observe time, it's been so incredibly um, revealing that we are constantly in this web of awareness, in this web of consciousness in this web of intricacies of human beings exchanging karmas with each other that it makes it hard to actually see what's clear. And one of the most important virtues that I've tried to live my life um, in has been a virtue of clarity. And I know that a lot of my friends, whether you're global leaders or average individuals who are just basically trying to pay the bills every month. You know, clarity helps your inner being, your inner awareness, your your inner intellect to be extremely clear about your next destination or your future. And so I would like to definitely offer everyone the virtue of clarity today because I just think it's such a needed virtue of these times. Over the weekend, the Washington, D.C. area witnessed the opening of a milestone of a museum, the African American Museum in the nation's capital. Can you believe this? Finally, 100 years later in the making. and It's magical, mystical, but timely, late, you might say. No. How appropriate to actually have opened up this museum at a time when we had Democratic President um, Barack Obama in office and actually witness the visuals, the visuals of seeing President, former President George Bush, who actually wrote that bill into power, and to have Congressman John Lewis, who drafted the bill and moved it in the halls of Congress, to see Republicans and Democrats sitting on a dais celebrating and honoring the opening of the America of the African American Museum. So are there any questions that there is hope on our planet that we really are looking at a hopeful nation? And before I um, continue with our conversation today on the air, I wanted to read you something that was gifted by our friend Marion Williamson in honor of the African American Museum that was opened on September 24th officially to the world. And this was Marianne Williamson, famous author of um, um, The Tears of Triumph, which is her latest book that's been released, and an award-winning author and best-selling author um, on various um, platforms. This is her prayer of apology to African Americans. On behalf of myself and on behalf of my country, to you and all African Americans, from the beginning of our nation's history, in honor of your ancestors and for the sake of your children, please 
hear this from my heart. I apologize. Please forgive us. And with this prayer, I acknowledge the depth of evils that have been perpetrated against black people in America. From slavery to lynchings to white supremacist laws to the denial of voting rights to all the ways both large and small that abuses have occurred. All of them evil and all of them wrong. And for all the oppression and all the injustice, I apologize. Please forgive us. For the denial of human and civil rights, for inequities in criminal justice, for instances of police brutality, for the denial of opportunity for economic injustice, and for all ways that racism has fostered these wrongs, I apologize. Please forgive us. And with this prayer, I acknowledge the beauty and genius of your culture, the power and genius of those who came before you, and of your children, and all your descendants. With this prayer, we pray that you, your children, and especially your men, be blessed and protected. May your men be blessed and protected. May your men be blessed and protected. May all your men, women, and children be surrounded by angels at this time. Dear God, may a great healing occur. We place it in your hands, the relationship between black and white Americans. May we be lifted high above the walls that divide us. May our hearts be awakened to our truth of our oneness, and may racism and prejudice be no more. May they dissolve in the presence of your love, and please come upon us and heal our hearts. To you, my African-American fellow citizen, please accept my apology on this day. It is to you and your grandparents and their grandparents before them and their grandparents before them. And may the screams that were not allowed be allowed today. May the cries that were never heard be heard now. And may the tears that were never heard be shed now. And may the healing begin. In this sacred container, may the healing begin. And may the light of love now heal us all. Amen. By Mary Ann Williamson. Incredibly profound, wouldn't you say? Mystical, timely, and heartfelt. So let's take this time for healing. A moment of silence. And send your peaceful, caring, and loving thoughts, all brothers and sisters, everywhere across the globe, but especially in our nation, our beautiful nation, our beautiful nation that welcomes black, white, gay, straight, tall, short, Jews, Gentiles, atheists, the good, the bad, the ugly in our land. And may we remember the scenes that we witnessed, such as a Republican former president signs the bill for the African American Museum to be constructed and for that bill to be written by a civil rights mover. Congressman John Lewis, and that the inauguration done by an African-American president. And when you put all of this in one package, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you are Republican, 
if you are a Democrat, if you are black or white, tall or short, matters here, my friends, is the content of the quality of your spirit, the virtuosity of your being that must prevail, that must be the expression of the times. And so with this, I hold in sacred trust this precious time in our country and in our world that the healing has begun, the wisdom has become amplified, and that love is being replaced by our attachments to labels and limited identities, which are so much less than the virtues of the spirit. You're listening to America Meditating, and I'm your host, Sister Jenna. We are talking about the African American Museum, and we're talking about the upcoming debate that's about to approach. And a lot of people are getting ready to glue themselves to that television tonight because the face off is tonight. It's for a good reason that the whole world is anticipating the energy between these two. But my question is, are we anticipating it to be entertained or are we anticipating it to make a change? Are we anticipating this journey to be entertained till our demise, <laughs> laughing our way silly in ignorance until we realize it's too late, we can't turn back the ship? Or are we really sitting there listening with the best of our wishes towards these both candidates? I am not choosing sides here. I won't tell you who I'm going to vote for. But the fact that we must have the purest of wishes for both candidates is essential. That if I, I believe that when I started Meditate the Vote in May, which was National Meditation Month, that the influence of pure thinking does have an impact on the consciousness of others. Similarly to how I think the Trump campaign has mastered, keep repeating the same rhetoric over and over again, and people will start to believe it because, in general, majority of individuals really don't do their own thinking. They think they do, but they don't. Because if we do our own thinking, we would think godly. We would think in a divine manner, and we would think in a way that creates unity and not exclusivity. Think about it. <laughs> think about it. We would create a way that would establish inclusivity, not exclusivity. And that's extremely clear to many of us who have grown up and are knowing that this is the time. So, what is it that we want? We're in a culture, we're in a society that um, we have mastered the way of affecting people's awareness. You know, publicity and public relations and advertising has really done a job in our thinking. We have grown into conditioning ourselves to believe that the richest of people and the most famous of people are the ones that we put on the front cover of a magazine and we totally negate and never give the platform to people who are doing the best groundwork ever on our planet. Do you know how many times we've done things that have been groundbreaking? We did kites for peace when America went to war in Iran. We got some media coverage, but it wasn't on the front. Um, pa- it wasn't on the front page of the Washington Post. We did dance for peace for children or kids in the inner city that were shooting themselves every day. We got front coverage in the metro section, but we didn't get front coverage in the Washington Post or the New York Post or the New York Times. We've done Remember Me when there was the anthrax killing and so much where we did artwork that would elevate our consciousness. I don't remember. I think we got front coverage in one ma- one major paper. We've been doing Meditate the Vote, and we've been having some grassroots support in the media where we've been really realizing that the nation has to become stronger. We have to elevate our consciousness. We've got to step up to our own game. Eh, A little bit, not that much. But 
put a price tag on somebody to be worth millions or billions and have them pay a publicist or a PR company or an advertiser a few million dollars to make us think it's the best thing next to sliced bread, and everyone, everyone's listening, and everyone wants to model their behavior and their way. I'm asking you, my brothers and sisters of this country, think a little more. Let's see what it is that we need to be in to help our own nation. Let's not depend on Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton to make our nation to remain a continued great nation and even to continue to enhance its capacity around the world. I mean, the questions in the media of late is, can Trump demonstrate that he's fit for the Oval Office? Can Clinton hide her contempt for her opponent and her disbelief at being locked in such a close race? Rather, are we ready as Americans to see how best we can support whoever comes in office? Do you feel the difference of the um, dialogue here? Are you ready as an American to support whomever is going to come in office after November 8th? So Meditate the Vote is inviting us to look at how best we can bring that to fruition. So let's take a few moments and have our meditative moment here on the air. And I will play for us the Let It Letting Go meditation from my Off the Grid Into the Heart meditation CD. So take a deep breath in and out. <laughs> 